Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. I've covered this topic many, many times before, but I want to try another uh, go at it with a customer actually uh, using diffusion. I'm going to put it in quotes in the field. So we're going to call this diffusion confusion because there's a lot of it out there. And let me start by saying that diffusion is the last technology that you want to put in your room. And I get two or three phone calls a day from people who say, well, I'm going to build this diffuser, I'm going to build that diffuser. And my first question is, why? Well, because they look cool. I want a woodworking project. I'm something with the, the possessive pronoun I in front of it. Whenever I hear that, I know the room is in trouble because I, I, I doesn't do anything for the room. The room is what we should be focusing our wants and needs, desires, if you will, upon, okay? It's what the room needs, not what we want, what we think is good, not because we have an empty space over here, let's put something. No, it's real easy if you make the room the focus, the center of the wheel, and everything else is a spoke. So put the room in the, in the beginning, right in the middle, and work from that. The room will tell you everything you need to do, and you can keep your opinions and your wants and desires out of the picture. Now, once we figure out what the room wants, now we can bring in your wants and desires. Colors, woods, things like that. We can do that then, but we have to design for the treatment, the type, amount, and position, because the room needs certain requirements, not what we think we, we want or need, okay? So in this photo, you can see that the client has used a product that he believes is a real diffuser. It is not, okay? It's a box with slats in it. So he's got that in, in the corners of the room, and then he's got two-dimensional diffusion, and, he, and not at the right frequency response range for the middle. See, there, it's a very complicated process, this diffusion creature. So you gotta think through everything. So let's back up a little bit. We know that quadratic diffusion is the only true diffuser because it can satisfy the five real rigid criteria. And I've done many videos on that. You can go through YouTube and search quadratic diffusion and you'll find my videos. In order to satisfy these five rigid criteria within our rooms, the product has to be designed a certain way to meet that criteria, okay? so. Quadratics are prime number based. It's a complicated formula, a modulus formula. We won't get into the math is too complicated, but let's just look at some dimensions first so we get an idea. The prime seven is four inches deep. The prime 11 is nine. The prime 13 is 12. Prime 19 is 16 inches deep. Now all of these prime numbers have different distance requirements that you must sit from away from them. Okay. So, a lot of calculations have to go into this. So your wants and needs, well, let's put it here because it'll look nice. The minute I start hearing that, I know the room is in trouble, okay? And then I put my defense attorney hat on and go, okay, let's defend the room because the room's in trouble. The client's wanting to do things the room does not need. So we have to back up a little bit. So we have to have space for the quadratic diffuser. In this picture, you know, we see the vertical orientation and then we see the two-dimensional orientation in the middle. You never want to combine both of those together, okay? You want to keep one surface in the room the same. If it's two-dimensional, is that's what the room requires based on usage, that whole surface area needs to be two-dimensional. If room usage and size and distance determines one dimension, then we do one dimension, but we cover the whole surface area. Mixing up those kind of technologies creates all kinds of issues because it's like putting different speakers in front of you, F putting a different speaker for the left channel and a different speaker for the right channel. Their array patterns of distribution are gonna be different. Um, their crossover points are gonna be different. And when they're different, that's distortion. So we don't want technologies competing against each other, as in uh, the photo that we're showing you, we want things to be balanced. Balanced is the key, okay? So like we said, in the corners, we have one-dimensional diffusion. In the center, we have two-dimensional diffusion, and we have to have surface area continuity. So be very, very careful 
If you're thinking about diffusion and you call me, the first question I'm going to ask you is why? And I know you're not going to have the right answer. I've been doing this 14 years now, 30, 40 phone calls a day. I see patterns, constant patterns. And I know right away that the minute I hear it, what I got to do to get you to rethink the situation and get you back on the right road. You've taken an exit ramp on the freeway that's not going to get you to the destination. I got to get you back on the freeway. So we have to calculate a lot of different variables when we're using diffusion. So be very, very careful with it. First things first, low frequency management. We've got to have low frequency management because low frequency fundamentals are responsible for middle and high frequency harmonics. So if we don't treat the low frequency fundamentals, the middle and high frequency mono for quadratic diffusion works, right? Where does it really work? Well, it works in that 250 to 3500 cycle range. You don't get any more mid than that, okay? So those are the harmonics of fundamentals. So we have to get things organized. So like a 250 harmonic, what, it's a 60 cycle fundamental? So it'd be 240, something like that. So the bottom line here is get the low frequency energy treated first, then address the middle and high frequency issues with reverberation time management and time signature on the reflections that are close to the system management. So we have two time signatures we have to be concerned about. Quadratic diffusion added to a room with too high of a reverberation time will make the room sound worse. And you've spent thousands maybe tens of thousands of dollars on diffusion to make your room sound worse. Well, that's not the objective. That is a recipe for madness, okay, and frustration. And the problem with that is a lot of times people have spent the money, they can't get the money back and start all over again. So like with noise technology, when we build walls, if you guess at what kind of wall to build for the noise that you think you have, you may have to tear it all down, start all over again. So measure twice, cut once. That's an old carpentry woodworking adage that works really good in acoustics. So keep everything the same, choose the right diffusion, manage the low frequency energy first and foremost, get the mids and the highs balanced out. Then we can use quadratic diffusion. Quadratic diffusion is the chocolate syrup on the ice cream, but you gotta have the ice cream first. It's a beautiful technology. It'll make your room sound twice as big or twice as worse if you don't apply it correctly. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.